Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final day of the Skilling Open 2020. Uh, there were a lot of very interesting games to choose from. I decided to show this one as, uh, I don't know, I felt like there was the, the it was the most action-packed game and that you guys are going to enjoy this one the most. But I'm probably going to cover another one, so use hashtag suggestion uh, if you want to see some other games covered uh, of the third day. So, uh, like I said, uh, now we're going to see uh, who uh, will qualify for the top eight, who will, uh, you know, uh, get past the uh, eliminate uh, the uh, preliminaries and go into the elimination brackets. Uh, and uh, here we have Anish Giri versus Alireza Firuja. It's a very, very wild game. Uh, a lot of a lot of good attacking chess and a lot of uh, turnarounds uh, throughout the game. So without further ado, uh, let's check it out as Giri has the white pieces and he opens with E4. Uh, Alireza replies with c5 and we have the Sicilian defense uh, on the board. Sorry about that. Uh, we have knight to f3 by Giri, d6 and the d4 going for the open Sicilian. Uh, we have captures, captures and now knight to f6. So uh, very standard stuff. We have knight to c3 and now here you have many options. g6, a6, e6. Uh, you, you can play a lot of stuff uh, but here we have knight to c6 going for the classical variation of the Sicilian. Bishop to g5, the so-called Richter Rauser, uh, and now e6, preparing uh, to, to continue de developing those dark uh, light square and dark square bishop. Uh, we have queen to d2, now uh, saying that I might be castling queenside, and I probably will. Uh, and here we have a6, taking away the b5 square from white's knights, uh, and now a uh, queenside castle by Giri. So he castled queenside, and uh, should Alireza castle kingside, uh, we will probably see a nice kingside attack with f3, g4, h4, and so on. So bishop to d7, and here f3, just strengthening the pawn here. Uh, at some point you are probably expecting b5, b4, so you want uh, to, to have this e4 pawn nicely defended, even though uh, f4 is also a very popular option, even more popular than f3 here. But okay, uh, bishop to e7, uh, uh, Firuja continues developing. And now, while well, you could uh, start by immediately going forward with the pawns, uh, first Giri goes for the uh, prophylactic king to b1. And uh, I don't know, it's... Uh, I guess it's a matter of preference, but I always play the king b1 first because I've lost too many games so <laughs> uh, because I haven't played king to b1 uh, due to some silly reasons. E e either you're you know going to be fall victim to some sort of tactic and you don't want your uh, bishop, uh, your king to be on the same diagonal as the queen, or maybe if the rook comes to c8, you're going to have problems if your king is on the c file, or if the queen comes to a5 at some point and you don't have the a2 pawn defended, maybe black can also use that uh, as a uh, means of a tactic. So king b1, uh, always a useful prophylactic move, uh, you know, uh, most of the times. So here king b1 and now comes knight captures on d4. This is a very rare continuation here. Usually uh, what you'll see is black playing b5, rook to c8 or queen to c7 setting up uh, uh, his pieces for a queenside attack but this is uh, somewhat rarer so obviously Firuja uh, testing if, if Giri is all that well prepared. Uh, we have queen captures uh, we, uh, grabbing back the piece and queen to c7. Now uh, continuing with, with the idea, rook c8, b5 still, uh, still the usual moves. Uh, we have g4, now that everything has been said and done here, Giri is ready to start pushing on the queen side because Firuja is either coming queen si uh, king side or he's gonna leave his king in the, in the center of the board. So here h5. Now challenging the g4 pawn and now g captures on h5. We have knight captures uh, and interestingly uh, Firuja already had this position in the 2019 World Blitz Championship. He had it against Alexander Grishuk uh, and Giri probably knew this uh, as uh, here Grishuk played h4 which is uh, kind of the strongest move recommended by the engine. Uh, but Giri plays rook to g1. So I don't know if Giri knew about the game, uh, but Giri is, uh, you know, really into chess theory, so I imagine he did. Uh, and he prepared a new idea, rook to g1. So already, as of move 14, uh, we have a completely new game. Uh, now, uh, okay, uh, so the bishop is nicely defended now by the rook. And here, rook to c8. Firuja just continues developing. Uh, also, one of the nice... Uh, things about having the king on b1 instead of on c1 uh, should this knight ever move uh queen to c1 queen capture c2 will not be checkmate if the king was still on c1 uh it would be checkmate uh we have queen back to d2 now the queen also guards the bishop here uh and uh you could try some something else you could try captures captures and then rook to g5 which really wins a lot of space for uh for white but uh you know 
it's uh, it's only one of the options here. Uh, Firuja uh, Giri goes queen to d2, and now comes b5. So the plan is uh, always pretty much the same for black in this setup. Uh, you just have to be able to play the moves, and white will of course try a lot of things to prevent you from doing that. So bishop to d3. Uh, the bishop will be very useful here, uh, guarding the c2 pawn. As the b4 could dislodge the knight, then the knight has to move, and you want uh, you want to have at least one more defender defending the pawn here. Uh, we have bishop captures on g5, rook captures on g5 now, uh, and uh, if queen captures, also possible, uh, would come with with a double attack here, but the knight is perfectly fine defending, king to f8 will also be a nice defen uh, defensive resource. So here we have rook captures on g5, and now comes b4. Finally dislodging that knight, knight back to e2, and now comes queen to b6, getting the queen out of the way. Uh, and uh, in some lines, preparing something like rook c6, king e7, bringing the other rook to c8, doubling up on the c-file and trying to uh, trying to break through. Of course, if, if white gives you a few extra moves, you might even be able to push the a-pawn and b-pawn to bust open uh, white's queen side. So here, f4, uh, continuing to push those pawns. f5 will also be an idea in some lines. And here, g6, just uh, preventing f5 and saying, okay, now I have a very nice solid position. I'm probably going to remaneuver the knight via some knight to f6 ideas, maybe push d5 later on. Uh, but here we have knight to g3 by Giri. Uh, f5 was also very interesting here, but it's hard to uh, it's hard to decide on such a move. For example, captures, captures. Now uh, you don't want the position to open up, so e5. Uh, but now, uh, you know, it's extremely hard calculating uh, everything out here because it's a, it's a rapid game. So you don't want to spend uh, too much time here. So Giri prepares this line uh, with knight to g3. Now saying, okay, f5 is my next move. Uh, and Alireza doesn't trade here. Alireza just continues... Um, uh, with his own plan. Knight back to f6 and only now Giri executes f5. So g captures on f5, we have e captures on f5 and now e5 of course keeping the center closed and now knight to e4. Giri brings another piece into the attack threatening to pick up the knight with check which would win material and here Alireza captures uh, on e4. There was a chance here and it's uh, very strange that Alireza doesn't find this because what's the what do we always say what's the one thing you always have to look out for when you when you play the Sicilian uh, is uh, you know getting this d5 moving. So here d5 actually forces a trade on f6 and this is a uh, uh, perfectly fine for black because after captures and captures you have uh, this beautiful center here guarding all of these squares your rooks are very nicely placed and it might look a bit scary but uh, you know it, it, it really is a massive center so this was one of the possibilities Alireza decides to go for knight captures on e4 instead bishop captures and now rook to c4 putting pressure on the bishop here uh, and now uh, while the bishop is under attack you could move it you could play bishop d5 you could play bishop to d3 but Giri plays the absolute best move queen to g2 which guards the bishop and also uh, keeps an eye on the rook here now ideas like rook g7 are possible rook g8 check are possible and it's very hard for Alireza to find the move so he starts running away with his king king to d8 maybe you can uh, hide the king somewhere on the queen side uh, and now comes bishop to d3. This was the probably the one of the one of the critical moments in the game, uh, because here uh, Alireza uh, Giri has to decide how to continue, and he continues with the defensive bishop to d3 idea. What you should go is uh, rook to g7. Attack the pawn here, and once black defends it, then you have bishop to d5, attacking the rook and the pawn here. And of course, uh, Giri saw this, and he thought about it, but you have to take a lot of things into consideration. It's not as easy, because after, for example, rook to d4, what do you play here as white? And there are a lot of things to take into consideration, because, for example, after captures, captures, you're still not... Uh, welcome to, to grab the pawn because queen to d1 is checkmate and you, you kind of have to uh, calculate everything and Giri doesn't have uh, well infinite time to, to dwell on this so he goes back bishop to d3 he says I'm gonna uh, you know create a completely safe defensive setup with bishop d3 and rook to c1 and only then will I go after this pawn create a pass pawn and win the game this way so here we have rook to d4 getting the rook out of the way also rook uh, rook c to h4 was uh, was an option uh, but again, I, I, I can't stress enough how how this is a rapid game and you don't have uh, all the time in the world. So rook d4. And now again, you cannot move the bishop because just captures. So there might be some plans of, of uh, you know, just maybe something like this could be could be problematic for 
uh, for white. So rook back to c1, uh, getting the rook out of this uh, out of this d file, and also uh, will help help out with the defense. King to c7, Firuja continues running with his king, and now rook to g7, going after the pawn here. Rook to f8, and now uh, finally queen to g5. Preparing to bring the queen here, and then you're going to put pressure on the rook, you're going to put pressure on the f7 pawn. It's going to be very difficult for black to defend this. So here, finally, Firuja plays d5, which opens up the 6th rank for the black queen, and now you have to figure out what to do here. Again, uh, h4 here, incredibly strong, because the h file is open, you just need to push that pass pawn uh, all the way up the board. Uh, but Giri tries a different plan. He plays queen to e7, which attacks the f7 pawn, attacks the rook, but now he gives Alireza a valuable defensive resource, and that is queen to d6. And now uh, you either have to trade or, or go back, but uh, w whatever you choose, uh, it's black who's... Uh, uh, who's calling the shots here because after let's say capture here so you're just gonna capture and push e4 the bishop is under attack you're gonna win the f5 pawn next and you have a massive center here it's just gonna be uh, it's just gonna be very awesome for black so here after queen to d6 uh we uh, sorry we have f6 uh, by white now defending the queen uh and here just rook to f4 he says all right you either trade here or i'm just gonna win win your pawn here so here c4, that's not a c4, Giri goes c4, uh, prepares to open up the c file as the king occupies it, and now uh, Alireza says, okay, queen captures on e7. We have f captures on e7, attacking the rook, rook to e8, and only now c captures on d5, opening up a discovery here towards the black king. King to d6, and now bishop captures on a6, grabbing another pawn. Uh, here, uh, Giri preparing bishop to c8 after the the rook snaps off the pawn. So this is exactly what Firuja does, and now bishop to c8, and Giri is now ready to go into a, a, a rook and pawn endgame. However, uh, 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 Firuja doesn't mind this. Here we have bishop captures on c8, rook captures on c8, and now king captures on d5. And it's three pawns each, uh, two rooks uh, each endgame, uh, where uh, white has a passed h pawn, also the opportunity of creating a passed a pawn, uh, but Firuja has uh, very soon to be connected uh, doubled pass pawns here, not doubled, but uh, connected pass pawns here. Uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty hard for white to stop them. So here, rook back to g2. Uh, and uh, now comes e4. Of course, Firuja wants to start pushing that pawn as quickly as possible. Uh, rook to d2, check, king e5, and now rook to c5 with check. We have king to f6, and now king to c2, bringing the king up the board. Maybe you can win this pawn this way. Uh, we have rook to e5, Firuja wants to trade a, a pair of rooks, and now rook to c7. Giri decides that uh, that's, that's not happening. Uh, we have king to g6, and now king to d1. You want to get your uh, king here, guarding uh, uh, against the e4 pawn. Uh, and here, Firuja played f6. And it's a, it's a really wonderful move, uh, because I was watching this game in the live coverage. Uh, I think David Howell mentioned that uh, this could have been a mouse slip. Why not push the pawn all the way two squares? But the problem here is that uh, it's it's a draw now, uh, because you've allowed white this beautiful rook d6 check, and the black king has nowhere to go. Problem is, after king g5, rook g7 check, you don't have the option of going down the board because if king h4 check, this is just checkmate. So that's an issue. So here you would have to repeat king h5 and here just go into a perpetual. So that's why uh, Firuja did not advance the pawn two squares, but rather only one square to f6. And uh, again, we, uh, we have a position where it's actually okay to play f6. So rook to b7, going after the b pawn, and now e3, attacking and defending. We have rook to g2 with check, king to f5, just bringing that king down the board. Uh, and now comes king to e2, stopping the pawn. Also, this is nicely protected, so you don't have to worry about this. Uh, we have rook to d4, now trying rook to d2, check, so king to e1 by Giri. Uh, we have rook to c4, now threatening rook c1, check, with the rook back to c2, check, to, to trade off a pair of rooks. But now rook b to g7, keeping that rook defended, uh, so you don't have to worry about this. Rook c1 check, king to e2, and now rook to c2 check. Uh, and here Giri goes king to d3. And now uh, you can trade here, but uh, the other rook will just take this rook's place. d2 square is nicely guarded. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, black uh, black will be able to capture the b2 pawn if you're not uh, careful and move, whoa, <laughs> and move this rook. So uh, feel free to pause the video and find the quickest way to win this for uh, Firuja while I give you a couple of seconds. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing I was only kidding when I said this is covered because this is exactly what you have to do. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's E2. And now you can see that the problem is uh, the rook cannot be captured because E1 is just queen. So you cannot allow this. After E2, uh, what can you do? Well, here uh, rook to G1 was played. You have to cover the, the E1 square somehow. Point being that if uh, black promotes to a queen now, you just capture it, and after this capture, you will capture on c2, and now white is fine here. Uh, so instead, after rook to g1, Giri just snaps off a pawn. Oh, sorry, Alireza just grabs a pawn. Uh, rook captures on b2. Now he's up a pawn. Uh, we have rook to e1, stopping the pass pawn, and now rook captures on a2. And now, after all is said and done, uh, uh, Firuja is up two pawns, and it's of course a completely winning endgame. But he still ha he still needs to win it. So rook to b7 going after the pawn, now king f4. Uh, we have rook captures on b4, uh, Firuja even allows Giri to capture this pawn, king f3, and now rook b to b1, uh, get, getting both rooks to the, to the first rank, but now just king to f2. And it was in this position on move 55 that uh, Anish Giri resigned the game and a brilliant, brilliant victory for Alireza Firuja. Uh, that brought him one step closer to, fi uh, to qualifying uh, for, the, for the final eight. And we're going to discuss this, but now you resign because there's nothing more for you to do. Uh, you can't really move anything. Uh, it's it's a really terrible position. You can never you can never move the rook. Otherwise, this is just uh, this is just winning. And if you don't do anything, just pushing this pawn to victory will will suffice for black. So uh, before I forget, uh, we need to check out the standings, the final standings after the third day. Even though we're going to show. Uh, at least one more game, I think. Uh, so let's just check that out. Uh, so here are the standings. So in first place, uh, sharing first place is Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura with 9 out of 15 points. Followed by with 8.5 points, Wesley So, Yanni Pomnishi and Levon Aronian. And then uh, we have with uh, 8 points, uh, Temur Rajabov, Maxim Vashir Lagrav and Anish Giri. So those are the top 8 who will be uh, who will be playing uh, in, the, in the knockout phase. Uh, and people who have not qualified, Alireza Firuja in ninth place, who, who won this brilliant game against Anish Giri, Laquang Liam, Ding Liren, uh, uh, Vidit Santos Gujarati, uh, David Anton Giharo, Peter Svidler, Ser Sergei Karakin, and Young Shishtov Duda. So, some incredibly strong players fail to qualify, but this is uh, what will always happen if you have 16 strong players, uh, and you know, if eight of them can qualify, then you will have eight uh, extremely strong players that didn't qualify but it's a shame for Ali Reza because he played a brilliant tournament uh, but Giri, Giri played uh, uh, an uh, you know, even better tournament he played brilliantly on the first day he played brilliantly on the second day and those two you know, days of brilliant play were enough for him to qualify even though he didn't win a single game on, uh, on day three he drew three games and lost two but still he had enough points just uh, by, by his great play on the first two days so tough, tough break for Alireza, uh, but we're gonna see what happens uh, in the preliminaries. These uh, are the bra this is the bracket of the knockout. So uh, as Magnus Carlsen finished first and Anish Giri finished eighth, we're gonna see Carlsen versus Giri in round one of the quarterfinals. Levon will face Nipomnishi, uh, Wesley So will face uh, Temur Rajabov, and Maxim Vashir Lagra will face Hikaru Nakamura. So it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be uh, pretty awesome. Uh, and again, uh, you know, the the chess gods uh, made it so that uh, the Magnus Car there is a chance we will see a Magnus Carlsen Hikaru Nakamura final uh, once again, and it, it'd be just crazy to to see Nakamura get one more opportunity to take down Magnus in the final. But but we'll see what happens. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. This is one I chose. I thought it was just uh, awesome. Uh, but like I said, do suggest uh, games. You know, uh, I, I do hope to cover at least one more uh, before the start of the of the uh, brackets. And uh, well, well, we'll see which one it will be. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Primoz Filigoy, uh, Florian Witt, uh, Ananta Ramachandra, uh, Jan De Jong, and Lucas Bachman for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the Skilling Open, uh, checking not open Skilling uh, uh, tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.